All right, so we have the Aerobasque Phenom 300, and I'm gonna walk through um, basically an entire flight. I got a short flight plan, 250 miles, and show you how to work every feature that's necessary to complete an entire flight with this plane. Um, so, where we're starting off is we're at Reno, and we're going to be flying over to Bakersfield, California. Um, I'm doing a little sunrise flight just because it looks nice for the graphics. And I have us outside of the airplane. Uh, let me close this window, hop in. This is the inside of the airplane. If you're on the latest update, clicking on the registration plate here is going to pop up their little menu. So they used to have a separate button for it. I think right above the screen, that's gone. It's now been included in this registration. And you can also click on the tablet to pull up Abby tablet and that will also give you the same thing. Uh, while we're looking at the menu, uh, just because I'm in the United States, I did check this box, which puts our fuel in pounds versus kilograms. And then also there's an option here for flight level mode, does not synchronize autopilot speed. What that is, is if that is unchecked, whatever speed you're going when you click flight level change is the speed it's gonna lock at. So with it being checked, it's only going to engage whatever speed I have selected in here versus the speed I'm actually going. And that's just a personal preference. I'm not sure which way is actually um, true to life with the airplane. And um, I also do not have the synthetic vision on um, just because that's my personal preference. So without further delay, go ahead and close that. Let me walk you through everything you need to know. So. I will pull up the checklist just so you guys can see. I'm gonna go through the full checklist. Um, that way I can explain things as we're hitting them. So we'll go to procedures. That's gonna be the like unabridged version of how to walk through everything. This also gives you a one page breakdown of the checklist. This is the normal checklist you would use when you're flying. Um, and then this is the normal procedures of how you would walk through everything as you're going. Um, basically the checklist is just to hit the important parts after you complete your flow and this is to actually teach you your flow. Let me see if I can remember how to do this. I think you can detach this tablet. Move it around, but I don't remember how. Alright, you know where it's at. I actually have it printed out, so I'm going to go off my printed out version and I'll walk you through it. So first thing we're going to do, cockpit safety inspections. So the way the plane's set up is that you're going to do your flow from the bottom left, follow the panel around, and down to the right. So basically you're going to circle around the pilot's seat. Um, after the engines are start, you'll also do a little bit of work over here. This is the air conditioning and the pressurization. And the general idea is if it's in the normal correct operating procedure, the switch will be in the up or center position. So that's the, the quick, if you're gonna look at a panel, know that something's on, off, or in the correct position um, for flight. <clears throat> so with that being said, oxygen bottle valve handle, push to restore. So that just basically means you're gonna push this in so that there's oxygen. Um, supply control knob is gonna be on passenger auto, that's this right here in the middle position. Crew oxygen mass test, that would be right here. It's not simulated yet in the aircraft. We're going to move up to the electrical panel, which is right here. Check that the battery one or two switches are in the off position. Bus tie knob and gen one, two switches are in the auto position. So battery's off while we're going through the initial flow. Everything else needs to go to auto and in the middle there, auto. So this is the normal flight position, up and in the middle. Then we're gonna move up to the pneumatic bleed systems. Those are gonna to go to auto, auto, auto. Test is going to be in the off position, which is straight up. Up here to the hydraulics. Hydraulic pumps need to be open, ELT armed. Passenger seat belts, I have them up, which is all the way off. We have the ELT switch, check. All right, fuel knobs, off for the crossfeed. 
auto, auto. It's a little hard to tell it's in the auto, so you can click it to see. Auto is in the middle. Push your cut out. When they state pushed out, they mean off. So if it's on and we had the battery on, you're going to see a white line, meaning it's engaged, which would be cut out. And if it's solid black, you're not going to have the, the little flag in it. Moving over to the heating, everything off here. ADS probes can be on the auto position. Ice protection off, wing stable, wing stabilized ice wing protection off. And then inspection light off. Gear lever down. Moving down here real quick. Bottle dispatch off. Fuel shut off, one and two are in the off position. Everything's neutral. Engine cut off, stop times two, engine ignition, we're gonna bump that up to the auto. And then confirm we are at idle, flaps at zero, speed brake closed, parking brake set. All right, we are ready to power the aircraft. So we'll let it run through its tests real quick. Oh. First thing we'll double check is that we are current with our navigation database, which we are, we can confirm that. And it's gonna run a couple tests on its own. We're just gonna listen to the audio alerts real quick. And actually while it's doing that, I will go over. This top panel. Emergency lighting, that is going to be like your exit signs set that to dim up wash lighting is basically like a dome light it's what kind of floods the aircraft with light you can see when i dim that i'll go ahead and turn that off since it's night or sorry becoming day cabin lighting those are lights in the back um when it's daytime i'll turn it off i'll put it on dim for right now panel lights is how bright the displays are and then they also have this little glow light that shines down on them you can see that there. Okay, leave that alone. Strobe light, navigation light, and taxi light. Now the beacon light on this aircraft, I'm gonna go outside so you can see, it's right here on the top of the tail, I believe. Yeah, right there. And it is actually triggered to the engine start. So when you start the engine, it'll automatically start the beacon. And since we are about to get ready, let's go ahead and go to the outside and remove the static elements. So now we got the plane just like this. Right, hopping inside. Once you start the plane up with the battery, first thing we want to check is the electrical panel. Make sure we have at least 24 volts. And let me go ahead and pull back up our procedures. All right, so we're at the power up section. Battery one and two switches are on, check. Battery voltage, they're looking for greater than 27 volts. We're not there. You can start the engine with at least 24 volts. Um, anything lower than that, then you're gonna need to do the emergency uh, backup battery, which is this right here, the emergency electricity. And since we are under 27 volts and we're gonna be here on the ground for a minute, we'll go ahead and open the GPU panel and connect the ground power unit. And you'll see that right here. And this is actually something that can be gotten to from outside. Let me walk over to it real quick and show you. And the reason I brought you out here to show you is it's actually clickable outside. So you can open and close this panel and connect it manually. Back inside, GPU panel, or sorry, the ground power unit is connected. It says it's available. We'll go ahead and click that in use. And you'll see this now lights up green showing the supplied voltage to all the systems. And now the batteries are reading the 28.5 volts, which is full for them. All right, back to here. Battery voltage greater than 27 volts, check now. GPU button as required. Uh, multi or MFD database expiry date we've already checked transponder and TCAS check we're gonna do an IFR plan so transponder will be set to 2000 in this plane if you put it on standby it will auto switch to altitude on takeoff um, and then when you turn the engines off I believe it'll go back to standby so we can just leave it on that right now since I'm not gonna be online 
All right, let's see here. Before we start, oxygen max flow check. We can't do that in this plane. Test panel check. So I'm going to walk you through our tests real quick. For the tests, I'm going to turn it out all the way to the left. First thing we're going to test is fire. So when we hit this button, we should see our lights come up here, signifying a fire on engine one and two. We have the display up here, says engine fire one and two, and then we hear the audible one and two for fire. We also have the word fire over here. Pop it up next. This is the smoke detector. This is for the baggage. It's gonna say fire, and then right here, it will say baggage smoke or bag smoke. We don't get the fire on the engines because it's not the engines. So those two are good. And then last is the enunciator panel. So hit that and it's gonna turn on all the lights and we are going to count them down. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the book says there's nine. I don't know what the other two are, but I know of these seven. So we'll double check. All those lights are working correctly. Pop it back in the off position. And then we can go ahead and also do the stall test. Book says to hold the yoke back. Um, you don't have to hold it back, it'll still do it. But we're gonna do the pusher test. And we'll press and hold this. We wanna make sure the pusher pushes the yoke forward. And now we know that is working correctly. If you don't do that, you will get a message on your, disc on your um, CAS system, crew alert system. That's this little window up here that tells you haven't ran that test yet. And the reason we have that in this plane is this is a T-tail, which means when you're at a real high angle, the air over the wings can disrupt the air over the tail and make it very hard to impossible to recover from a stall. So to avoid getting in that situation, they have a pusher system on this aircraft, which means if you get at too high of an angle with the air going over the wings, it'll automatically push the nose down to avoid getting into the stall. All right, so signs and outlets. Let's go back to the, the manual here. Signs, outlet switch, belts on. That's going to be down here. I'm going to leave them off right now. I don't usually turn those on until after I'm done fueling. External lights. They want you to go ahead and turn on the nav light now. Check. Uh, emergency light switch is armed. I already clicked that to arm. That's right here. Fuel quantity and balance check. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll show you how the fuel system works. We'll pull up this panel. And you can manually adjust the fuel here. Just move it up and down. They added this beautiful balance fuel button. So you can click that and it'll automatically level out the tanks. Um, passenger package, this is, this is all really self-explanatory. And then you have it in kilograms and pounds. But you can also do it from the plane itself, similar to the GPU panel, which is the way I prefer. So we will go ahead and bring the camera to the fuel panel. Open up the fuel panel here. You hide this. Go ahead and power on the system. Open up the lid. Give it a second to load. Right now it says our quantity T for total is 425 pounds of fuel and we're pre-selected to fill it to full. Um, you can switch it to left, right, or total. Um, leave it on total 99% of the time. And the flight we're gonna do hardly requires any fuel. It's like a thousand pounds. But we're gonna go up to, we'll do 1500 pounds just to kinda Make sure we have plenty of fuel and we can do an alternate if we need to. Press and hold. 1500. Pop this up and engage to refueling and it'll start to fill that up. We can also verify that in here. We see the fuel is rising. We also have a fuel page here which shows that the fuel is rising as well. All right. So we'll let that do its thing. Uh, oxygen pressure, check for minimum for dispatch. So if we go to our okay, status page, oxygen pressure needs to be into the green, which we are. Uh, engine ignition switches to auto, which we did earlier. They are on auto, check. Thrust levers are at idle, parking brake set, doors closed. That's all what we do up to the start point. So let's go off of the procedure real quick and get some basic information in here. Let's hide this page. I need to put in my flight plan. Come down here so you can see it. 
hit the flight plan button to bring up the flight plan. It should show you either your last loaded flight plan or the airport you're at, which is right here. Click the center button to get our cursor so we can move around. So roll it down to the next panel. We can type it in here or you can hit the K, which will allow you to use the keyboard. And we're gonna go to K, B, F, L. Enter, enter Bakersfield. And the reason I chose this short flight is because I won't have to put any waypoints in. Instead, we're gonna go to procedure and I'm going to put in a departure. The departure we're doing is Zephyr 6 to Darby. So we'll go down to Zephyr 6, runway 16 left to Darby, and load. So now we have runway 16 left, which is what we're going to take off. We're going to climb to 4,920 feet before we start our turn to Zephyr. And then from Zephyr, we'll fly out to expose Darby. Then we'll go to procedure. And we're not going to do an arrival, but we will do an approach. The approach I have in here is for runway 12 left. And we're going to do an initial approach fixture of pond. And we will set the minimums. Go ahead and, whoops. One second here. 12 left, check. Pond. Minimums on. So the big dial moves the cursor. The small dial adjusts it. I should really stop messing with it like that. 12 left. Enter. Pond. Borrow is the only option here. And you can either move it here and set it to zero, or I'll show you the easier way. Procedure, approach, 12 left, pond, borrow, load. Over here, you'll see the bar minimum. Borrow minimum comes up. And let me just check my plate real quick. For LNAV, it's 1,073 for our decision altitude. When you see this little, um, looks like a battery symbol, that means you can scroll up and down. Also, on any of these things where you get that symbol, you can click it and then type it in. So we're going to go to 1073. Oh, 1073. And just hit enter. And now the borrow is set. And actually, they give us... A little bit of wiggle room. I'm going to set that to 11. Over here, you have the magnifying glass. That means you can zoom in and out. We'll zoom in for taxing. This runway closest to us is runway 16 left, as you can see labeled up here. So that means we're going to taxi out, take a right on the taxiway to the end of the runway. All right, also, we notice our fuel is full, 1499. So let's go back over to the fuel. And we will close that, turn that off, turn that off, close the panel, go to the outside view. We are now done outside, so let's go ahead and close all of the doors. Okay, and then we can go inside and click our status page. And it also will verify that the doors are closed. Just to show you, I open the passenger door, you'll see the doors open. Cancel it, close, doors closed. All right, so now the fuel part is done. So we can go back to our procedures checklist. Actually, that's everything up to the engine start. So let's finish with what we were doing. We have the flight plan entered. We pull it back up in the page. Zoom in a little bit here for you. With the so again, you can click this to get the little cursor icon. If you have the cursor icon on, you can scroll through it and it'll step through the flight plan so you can visually see it. Um, you'll see here it puts the approach after the actual airport that you have listed in the flight plan. And that's because you'll have an option to activate the approach later. 
by going through procedures and then it'll bump it up and you'll fly the actual approach. Um, I like that it separates it out like this because right now we're planning for this approach, but say for instance, we didn't know what runway we were gonna get, it then doesn't affect your flight plan and fuel planning and all the other information here. So that all looks good. We'll turn off the cursor so it centers on the airplane and where we're at and we will hide the flight plan for now. All right, so fuel's done, pilot, passenger weight, that's all done. Now we can look here and see our weights. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and set our, actually we'll hold off on that. Let's go back to the procedure and start the engines. All right, engine start. Uh, first thing we're gonna check is the oil temperature for the engines greater than negative 40. Otherwise it would be a cold weather start. And it is greater than negative 40, it is seven degrees. So that is fine. Battery voltages, are they at least greater than 24 volts? Yes, because we are on the GPU. And we can verify that here. Our batteries are at 28 volts. Associated start stop switches and knobs. It is common practice to start engine two first, and we're going to move them to the start position, then run. The reason we start engine two first is to allow someone to crawl under and disengage the GPU prior to starting the engine one because it's right under that engine. It's just a courtesy thing. So let's go ahead and start the engine. Real easy. Clicking on run, clicking on start, and then let go. And it's in a completely automated process. We can monitor for the temperature, make sure it doesn't spike into the red. If it does spike into the red, we can stop the start uh, sequence and shut down the engine. We see here the generator's kicked on, so now we're getting voltage from the generator. That means it's now safe to disconnect the GPU. Before we unplug it, we're going to switch that over to available. That way there's no electricity flowing between those wires when they go to unplug it. And we will go outside and unplug it ourselves. Let me we'll hop over here. GPU's off and verify the image is now gone. Let's start engine one. All right, we got two generators going. They got a good split on the power. Two good engine starts. All right, after start, GPU disconnect, which we've done. Emergency electrical button, push in. Emergency electrical button, push in means it's activated. Check the battery voltage on one and two. Battery voltage one and two, right here and here. Look good. Caution, each battery voltage must be at least 23.5 volts, which it is. Emergency electrical button, we'll go ahead and push it out. It is out now, we'll guard it again. We've already done the stall protection test. Their aircraft control unit, AFCS control unit is over here. Whoops, didn't mean to click that. Oh, actually, I'm having a, a moment. AFCS. What switch is the AFCS? Not sure what that means actually. All right, we'll move on. Engine takeoff data and takeoff speeds need to be set and transponder set for the flight. So let's go ahead and do the engine takeoff data. Pressurization panel, go ahead and move it to both. And I'm gonna turn the fans up a little bit for the AC panel. <clears throat> okay, so let's pop this up and pop up our Abby tab. The reason we have both is because we're gonna go to aircraft. We're going to go to performances. Top of the page. Our altitude here, so our pressure altitude, which is having the pressure set to standard, 
is 4,200 feet. So we're going to go to our takeoff data for 4,200 feet dry runway flap one. So this is 3,000 feet, 4,000 feet, 5,000. 4,200, we'll scroll up just to give us a safety margin. So 5,000 feet, the weight of us is 6604 in kilograms so that's going to put us at the 6800 mark again we always go up for safety outside temperature is four degrees celsius so we will go to the warmer one of five degrees celsius at 6800 that's going to tell us we need 950 feet for takeoff our v speed is going to be v1 and v rotate is going to be 100. V2 is going to be 111. And if we go to the bottom, our VFS is going to be 125. Set. All right. Back to the checklist. Engine takeoff data set, takeoff speeds check, transponder set. Altimeter set. Let's do our altimeters real quick. Airport K R N O. Go down here. 3016 for the altimeter. So 3016 and 3016. All right. For initial takeoff, I like to climb out at 185 knots. We're gonna go up to, actually I should check the departure. Altimeters are checked. Flight control, flight controls check and see that they're free and clear. So full back, left, right. Wow, left, forward, right, back. And I also have a little view here. Let's make sure we see it going up on the wing, which we do. All right, flight controls are free and clear. Hide this panel. Check the trims are set and checked. So we're looking for our trims to all be in the green. So green, middle, middle. Double checking that. Good to go. Flaps set to takeoff. So we're doing a flaps one takeoff. So flaps, sorry, flaps set to one. Verify it's indicated here, which it is. External lights as required, ice protection as required. So with icing below five degrees and visual, visual visible moisture, we would turn on the icing protection, and also we would go through the icing um, abnormal procedures list. We don't have to worry about that right now. It's clear skies, so I'll skip that for us. And since we're getting ready to taxi, let's go ahead and turn our seatbelt signs on, taxi light on, and we'll go out. Hide this panel, break off. Tap the brakes, make sure it works. Brakes are working. Let's give it a little fuel and head out to the runway. When taxiing, you can see your ground speed either right here or right here. All right, so let's do a before takeoff checklist while we're taxiing. Takeoff config check. So right here we have a takeoff config button, press it. Takeoff, okay. If it says okay, it means everything's in the proper position for takeoff. 
cast messages check we don't have any cast messages so that's good signs and outlets so make sure our passenger seatbelt signs are on which we've already done approaching runway one six left three four right yaw dampener off so yaw dampener is right here on the autopilot panel and it's off because we do not see the yaw dampener uh, light up here in our little window. Passengers advise lights as lights as required. All right, so let's walk through the takeoff sequence. Takeoff sequence happens pretty quick. Anything below 70 knots will stop on the runway. Um, anything above 70 knots up to V1 will only stop for um, engine fire, unsafe to fly, or flight control issue. Above V1, we are going to take it to the air, we'll sort it out, and we can come back here for an emergency landing if we need to. <clears throat> Speeds are set, initial altitude is set, verify the altimeters are set and checked. You're good to go here. And transponder is on standby. It will automatically switch to alt, so I will leave that alone for now. What you need to do on your joystick is there is a button that you need to map specifically for the Aerobass that will initiate the autopilot flight director. For, sorry, we'll initiate the flight director for the takeoff, like the takeoff go around button, which is on the side of the throttles here. So I have that hotkey to the joystick. Let's go a little faster so we can get to the actual runway. And because we were taking off around mountains, I do like to put up the inset here. So this is a little map here. We'll declutter it so we don't have to see anything other than the map. And I'm going to take off everything here except for terrain and zoom it out just a little bit. Just to help give us a little bit of awareness since we are in the mountains. Um, you could also pop this up on the main map right here, terrain. Um, but I don't like that big red sticking out. In fact, a lot of times I'll take off the topographical map and just use this black and white map. We'll zoom that out to 15. Also, we want to confirm right here our landing elevation is showing, and it does. Landing field elevation 505 feet. All right, we will pretend we called up to the tower. I know we already got our permission for takeoff and we're about to enter the runway so we will go ahead and turn on our landing lights and the strobe lights all right when you hit the takeoff go around button the flight director is going to pop up it's going to show a much lower angle then you actually need to fly to avoid bursting through the flap safe retraction speed. So what you typically do is you rotate up to the angle of the flight director. Once you get a positive rate of climb, increase that angle up to about 15% just to slow down the acceleration and give you time to get the flaps retracted, autopilot engaged, yaw dampener on, and everything sorted out so that you're you're doing it safely. And I'll, I'll walk through it as we, as we encounter it. All right, clear left, or sorry, clear on the approach side. Clear down the runway. Go ahead and get lined up. Approaching runway one six left. Entered runway one six left, eight thousand nine hundred feet remaining. Uh, 
All right, we are lined up. Go ahead and get the throttle set up to about 50%. Let it stabilize, it stabilize. Hit the takeoff, go around switch. That gets our flight director going. We're going to slide the throttle all the way up to takeoff with ATR green. So that's the automatic thrust reserve. And what that does, if we have an engine failure, it'll automatically pull back the engine that has the problem and then full max continuous thrust on the engine that's good. V1, rotate, slow pull back. Get us up to our flight director. We have a positive rate, gear up. Let's pull it up to 15 degrees. Slow down that climb. All right, we're above 600 feet. I'm gonna bring it down. Retract flap speed. Don't retract your flaps until you have a positive, um, you're showing a positive gain on the ticker. You wanna make sure you are accelerating before you retract the flaps. Go ahead and engage the autopilot with the yaw dampener, and we're gonna accelerate this up to 185, and I'll engage the flight level change. Flight level change engaged, and then we're going to bring the throttle back until we get climb throttle with the number here so that is in the max or the climb sorry the climb continuous thrust detent there all right so after takeoff checklist flaps are up speed brakes are closed and we are climbing just a quick look enjoy some of the views and we are above our initial altitude for turning so pull up the flight plan confirm that we are going to Zephyr so everything looks good there um, also when the flight plans up this is a custom zoom level on the map for when the flight plans up so this zoom level is different than when the flight plan is gone it can be set independently All right, get the checklist back up all right, after takeoff climb, landing gear lever is checked up, flaps are at zero, we've already checked that. Retract flap at the speed at or above VFS, but not below VFE. We've already done that. Thrust levers into the continuous thrust climb setting, we've done that. Yaw dampener on, we've done that. Icing conditions, we don't have any. Science and outlet switches as required, external lights as required, airspeed as required. Typical climb profile is 230 knots until Mach 0.63 and then hold 0.63 Mach until the desired cruise level. So I will walk you through that. We're above 10,000. Go ahead and turn off the outside landing gear lights and let's go ahead and do an acceleration here. So there's a couple ways of doing this. Uh, because I like to be realistic for pretending I have passengers, I want this to be smooth acceleration for them. So I'm going to switch it over to vertical speed real quick. I'm going to wind that down to about 2,000 feet per minute, which we have here. That's gonna allow the plane to speed up. And we're gonna go ahead and set into here the speed they suggested for best climb performance. And that was 230. So 230, hit enter. Once we get to that 230 mark, I'll re-engage the flight level change. And then the reason I do it in this order is that stops uh, a drastic nose pitch uh, up. Uh, we'll also clear ourselves up to our cruise of 36,000. All right, we are good, engage flight level change. And now we have a, a slow pitch up. So that's just a little bit more comfortable for the passengers. And now that we're also cleared above 18,000 feet, we'll go ahead and set this to standard. And you can do this two ways. You can go down here and go to, oh, I'm having a moment. PFD, standard barrel, and set it that way. Um, or you can just scroll down to 2992, right here. This is also where you would switch it from inches of mercury to, um, I forget what HPA stands for, but this is where you can make that switch as well. 
And we are climbing through transition. Not to engaged in apps. Right now we're engaged in our role. So that was my bad. I should have engaged that earlier. And since we're above all the altitude, I'm going to go ahead and hide this insert. Now we are on course. And get rid of that so I can see what's really going on. And as I mentioned earlier, this is going to be a very short flight. So, since we got a quick second, I'm going to walk you through the next step. Planning for our arrival, or our approach, I should say. So, our approach has us doing a final approach at 2,500 feet. I'm gonna show you how to use VNAV. We also wanna be at 3,400 feet at Hotel, and let me just look at my plate real quick. Pond does not have a initial approach altitude. So we will also do 3,400 feet for there. So to figure out when you should descend, what you would do, let's get the cursor going, Get down here over to Pond, Hot Tail. If you hit Enter, and if we have the approach activated, it's gonna calculate our VNAV. So once we get up to Cruise, I'll go direct to Pond, and um, I'll walk you through how to do that, and you'll see. I'm um, also, you can verify the altimeter, our transponder went to altimeter mode, or altitude mode automatically on takeoff. Once the plane climbs through 30,000 feet, it'll automatically switch to Mach versus Speed. Um, you can also manually do that switch by clicking the center button. So Mach, Speed, you can see it changing over here. And I'm trying to keep ahead. We are going to BFL. Altimeter two nine nine seven. Aircraft. We're going to get this over to our landing data, so we'll have that ready. All right. Landing data. Flap one with the flap three landing or flap two with a full flap landing. That's the one I prefer. Our weight, we don't have the exact weight yet. We'll recheck it earlier or later once we get to it. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Not sure what just happened there. Let's give this a quick second. I think that might have just been the weather updating and doing something crazy with the plane. Let's re-engage the autopilot and see what happens. Okay. Everything looks good. And crank this up to 0.16 for... Alright. Very strange. Let's make sure it's going to be doing what we're expecting it to do. Still doing our flight level change, climb. We're definitely climbing. Going above 30,000, what we're going to do is engage the bank. You'll see this green show up to the left and right of this. And this just limits the bank angle um, when you're at a higher altitude. Anyways, as I was mentioning, so once we land, we want to know our landing mass, which will be here, and we will then compare that to this chart to get our V speeds for landing. So I just have this ready on the page um, to go for once we're on our approach. 
and we're about to turn pass through Dobby as well. At which point we'll activate the approach and we'll go through the rest of the flight planning page. Uh, what else can I show you? If you want to know how to work the radios, right here, COM 1 and 2. COM 1, and then you can click it, it'll swap it over. Um, COM 2, if you click the button, get you down in COM 2. Same with NAV right here, if you're doing ILS information, you can put that in here, flip it over the same exact way. Um, you can also pull up the flight plan here. Um, everything you can do on the big screen over here, you can do on the small screen if you don't want to be popping up the maps. And we have some crazy wind. 26 knot tailwind, 33 knot crosswind component. Uh, this can also be changed. I guess I'll walk you through that. That is going to be under PFD. Bearing 1 and 2 are down here, so I'll show you those. So you have a GPS, or you can have it set to off, or the localizer. Um, localizer 2, GPS, or off. Wind, which is what we're seeing here, give three different options with that. Option 1, 2, and 3, or off, of course. Defaults altitude unit if you need to go from meters to feet and then back. CBI will change what you're using for navigation so we're on GPS so you can click it and change it to um, the localizer as well. And then if you want to do the heading you can click and adjust the heading here or like anything else I've shown you you can type it in here and set it as well. Um, I don't like this option here to minimize this simply because it's hard to tell what setting the engines are in, the thrust, or I don't know what you call this panel, the automatic thrust, it's not automatic thrust, um, it's the computer control thrust. Um, I don't like not knowing it, so I like to see the word climb with ATR either activated or not activated. All right, we are at cruise altitude. I'm gonna let it pick up speed and I'm gonna show you a couple of features real quick. So as you can see, we're increasing speed. I want to do a, we're actually gonna do a slow cruise. We'll do Mach 0.65 for cruise. And we're going to move the thrust down to max cruise. So you'll know it's at max cruise because you'll see it go to cruise and you'll show it, show the limit here, 85.5. I also, I want to set it to 65 right here. So I'm gonna go up here where it says CSC, constant speed cruise. If you click that, you'll see it says CSC up here. You'll also see it puts these green bars on either side of the throttle and it will automatically adjust, adjust the throttle within these limits to hold the speed that was selected when you engage this button. So we'll do that to try to help maintain it. It's very slow at reacting though. So as you can see, we blew past the 0.65, but it is pulling back the throttle, which you can see here and here. Fuel flow is a much accurate, more accurate idea of adjustments to the throttle to bring it back down to that speed. And so that's why I chose such a slow cruise speed, just to give you time to, to see that. And once it hits the limit, it's basically saying, hey, I can't reduce the thrust anymore to slow down to that speed. And we'll kind of leave that alone because we're not in any rush. Let's go down real quick and pull this up and activate our approach. So procedures, activate approach. Oh, before we actually do that, 
heading select heading I don't want it to just start turning when we do this activate approach give it a second to load pull the flight pan back up now we're going to direct two ponds and you can see here it's got a hard altitude of 3400 feet at hotel Ho yeah hotel and that is now in our VNAV data so time to top of descent so we should start our descent at four and a half minutes from now. When we're within a minute of it, you're gonna see a little bar pop up and it's going to show you a, a path suggested, a suggested path to follow your descent in order to make all these times work. So we'll go ahead and hide that. And I guess since we're going so fast, let's just bump this up to 0.7. And again, adjusting this speed here doesn't change the CSC. That goes off of the speed you were going when you engaged it. So let me go ahead and unclick it. We'll let it go back up to max cruise thrust. We'll let it climb up to, or accelerate up to the two, the Mach 0.7, and then I'll, I'll re-engage it. You can also just manually pull the throttle back and hold it there too. The idea behind the max cruise thrust is with the max cruise, it shouldn't take you past your V and E speed, your never exceed speed. Um, but you're also gonna get your highest fuel burn on there as well. All right, engage at a 0.7 and it should start dialing this back. And we see it's doing as expected. So we can kind of leave that alone. And also since we're going faster, this time is shorter. So we're down to three minutes. Alright, take a quick look outside. I also like to pop this little panel down. Oh, that's pretty rude of us. It's pretty turbulent. I won't turn off the passenger seatbelt sign, but you can click that down, go back out here. You can see now the fasten seatbelt sign's off. And the reason we're getting to this limit so easily is because we're cruising so low. This plane can fly at 45,000 feet. There's a lot of extra thrust out of these engines. So when you're only at 36,000 feet, the engines don't have to work very hard to be going very fast. Um, in fact, let's turn that off and we'll manually just dial the throttle back. This is the manual throttle range here. Now there's a couple ways of doing this descent path following. Um, you can do it all with the flight level change and adjusting the throttle, um, or you can do it with the vertical speed. Um, I'm not really sure which way is, is better. I typically do the uh, flight level change speed just because I like to keep the math easy as we're descending as far as time to destination and things like that. But if you want to go down faster, as in get to the airport quicker, um, you can bring this all the way right up to near V and E and then just do vertical speed. Uh, so we're within a minute of our top of descent. So now we have the suggested um, vertical speed and then we have this little arrow and this arrow will start to move down as we approach the top of the descent which is also indicated by this little white dot on our map over here and I'm going to do a descent at 0.7 Mach and I'm just going to adjust throttle to make it happen not be a bad pilot and get us back on, on track here. All right, so it's coming down. It's our vertical path, path guidance. Let's go ahead and click flight level change. It's going to start dipping us down to get back up to Mach 
Oh, it would also help if I put a, a different altitude in there to tell it what to do. Wow, this is kind of a horrible stream here. All right, we're gonna dive down. And I'm actually not gonna give it throttle yet. I'm gonna let it kind of even out Sink with the right. speed. Right. And then we will make our adjustments once it's back on its, its guided path. Destination ATIS is 118.6. And you can see here we are really close to being on path. It's going a little bit below us. So let's bring the throttle back a little bit. You'll see this increases to keep it all in line. And this is a real easy way to keep yourself going right. Don't worry so much on this. We're gonna be following this path right here. And again, this is just a guidance system. It's not meant to be specific. Uh, or not specific, uh, it's not meant to be precise, autopilot, controlled, descent. It's just there to kind of take away the hard work of doing the math of, hey, I'm this many miles out, this altitude, mental math, when should I start going down? All right pop up our checklist real quick. We are in the descent phase. So windshield heating needs to be on. This will keep the windows from fogging up. Pressurization check. We want to make sure that we're showing a change in pressurization and a landing field elevation. So check and we haven't gone down enough for that to matter. Landing speed and minimum set. So we can go ahead and do this now. We currently weigh 6,300 6, pounds. So that should put us at 62, 64, so 106 and 121. VAC is gonna be 106. The ref 106. VFS 121. Just double check. VFS 121, 106, 106. Alright, so that's checked. Icing conditions verify. Uh, confirm that the minimum altitude in the barrel is set, which it is. And our signs for passengers and seatbelts. Alright, descent checklist is complete. If we pull up this, this will give us a little bit more accurate information as to our descent profile. Zoom in a little more. So the target is this many feet per minute versus what's required. And then the difference between that is the deviation. And this tells us basically how far off we are on our descent profile. Um, if it's under 500 or 1,000, it's usually good enough for me. Uh, flight path angle, so it's calculating this based off of a 2.5 degree descent down into the um, our approach point. Um, also, when you see this little bullet or block down here, that means there's a menu to the right. And the way you would access that menu is by rotating this dial when the cursor is not showing. And by cursor, I mean this little highlight here. So if the highlight's not showing and you rotate this dial, right there. That'll take us to the next window. So this window here is actually Stay saved right. flight plans, right. which we don't have any. And the weather just updated and made the plane go crazy again. 
Alright, let's switch this the vertical nav. Because I'm tired of dealing with this nonsense. And Alright, we're good. We're below 30,000 feet, so the bank angle restriction can come off. You'll see the green bar here has disappeared. I'm going to click a couple times so you can see it on, off. And you can see in our map, fuel to low level. This is why you should really flight plan your fuel as opposed to winging it. So, all right, we are aware. That means we're also expecting this one to come up in a minute when it hits 375 as well. Looks like we need to make sure we nail this landing. And we're doing an RNAV approach. Just double check the weather out there. Clear skies, good altimeter. Wind is fairly calm. 1104 knots. All right. I also do have failure set in this aircraft. The I don't normally do that in airplanes, but the fact that this plane has procedures listed for emergencies uh, leads me to believe that a lot of the stuff is modeled. And whenever something is modeled, I feel I'm not getting my money's worth unless it's at least a possibility. So I do have failure set with an average mean time of think of 100 hours. So it shouldn't be a common thing, but I could have a failure and it'd be a great time to get to play around with some of the abnormal procedures. In fact, on my second flight ever with this plane, I actually had a failure and it really threw me off because A, I was still learning the plane, so I wasn't sure if I was doing something wrong or if it was an actual failure. But um, it was real fun to go through the checklist and, and get to play around with it. And how are we doing on our descent? So we're kind of getting away from that number a little bit. So let's dial this back just a hair. And this is telling us also that we are below our recommended guidance path. And since we're low on fuel, I don't want to be too low. We'll keep altitude as our friend. So let's scale this back a little bit more. Get this number coming down. All right. And although we're low on fuel, we should have plenty of fuel to make it there into our landing. We're passing our transition altitude, so I will go ahead and set the altimeter for the airport, 2997. Transition LTITUDE. 2997. 2997. And the beauty of this, this uh, vertical nav guidance is we've basically had our throttle at 50% the whole time, maintaining a relatively smooth descent and 
we are on target to be at the right altitude at the right approach point, which is perfect. I like this too. Look at that. Time to top of descent. This is saying top of descent because we're still a little high off of our path. Let's adjust for that again. I was always taught, make the plane do what you want it to do. So I really shouldn't be letting the plane get away with such a big vertical deviation here. We should get the plane in line, give ourselves the best possibility for a, a good landing and approach, especially since we have some low fuel messages going on. So we'll do that. And again, I'm not too worried about the throttle adjusting, um, making adjustments to the throttle because we have plenty of speed. Um, there's no rush to get there. So the only thing we're going to look out for next is when we get below 10,000 feet, make sure we're not overspeeding the airplane. <clears throat> and in fact, our reference speed is in there. Our final approach speed, what do they recommend? Let's see if it's in here. Go to our procedures book. Our approach, they don't recommend the speed there. Flaps. I will put in the speed we set of our flap 6 and 121 <clears throat> with our reference being 106. This plane, well first off, the air brake in this plane is very powerful. It will, it's like slamming on the brakes in the car. It will slow the plane down quick. The flaps on the other hand don't slow the plane down very fast at all, very well, period. Um, and in this plane, you can't have the flaps and the air brake this, um, extended at the same time. So if you have the air brake extended and you start to in put down flaps, it'll automatically close the air brake. The only time that the air brake and the flaps will be open and down at the same time is when the plane is on the ground slowing down. In fact, once the plane hits a certain speed after landing, 2998. Okay. Um, you have to manually deploy the spoilers when you land, but they will automatically retract once the plane slows down to a predetermined speed. Um, I don't know what that speed is off the top of my head though. All right, let's keep working to get this in line. Oops, went the wrong way with it. Um, also, you'll see here the throttle or the engine speed has been slowly decreasing. That hasn't been me changing the thrust. That's just because we're moving down into more dense air. I mean, this is nice. Look at this. We haven't had to make any changes to the throttle after we got on our initial path. We're still in line to be on our path. Very, very good. And it's going to work out that our speed's going to be under 250 by the time we're below 10,000 feet. Simply because I'm making the adjustments with the vertical speed to, to get us onto the right um, slope here. Actually, let's level out for a minute. We'll let this come under 250 and we'll let this come down. And then we'll readjust our throttle settings if needed. I don't think they will be needed. I 
I'm gonna go ahead and set this to our final descending altitude, 1400, which is right here, 1440. Actually, we'll do our glide slope intercept path, 2500. Not glide slope, because this is an R nav approach, but I'm actually not sure what it's called when it's an R nav. All right, get the nose going back down. Now that we are above our, our glide slope, we'll have this goes from top of the descent, it says bottom of the descent. So that means we should be at our 3,400 feet in four and a half minutes. And we're creeping up in the speed, so let's go ahead and pull this back to 40. It is extremely easy in this plane to have poor energy management and to be going too fast by the time you're ready for your approach. In fact, it will probably happen to us. Um, we will try to avoid it. And the only way to really avoid it in this plane is you need to slow down early. Because like I mentioned, the flaps do not do a whole lot to slow the plane down. And we are getting to our initial approach fixture. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to idle. And let's really slow this plane down. I wanna get this plane down to where I can start extending flaps so that we can be ready for landing. Keep our vertical nap going good. Still a little bit off on our deviation, so down another click. Let's get ourselves lined up. Also, below 10,000 feet, our lights can come on. And airport should be slightly off to our left. Sorry, out here to our left. Don't see it yet. Also, now that we're past our initial approach point, we can go ahead and activate the approach. And this will keep a lookout for the glide path and the vertical speed. And, and look at this. Throttle is all the way back. We're at idle. And we're not going down fast. Just 1,300 feet per minute. And you can see the plane isn't slowing down at all. Double check our cabin altitude is decreasing, so that looks good. And again, not having to adjust the throttle, I'm just working on keeping the vertical path in here. And this is going to adjust a little bit because we're slowing down. So this generally will sort itself out to be right where you need it if you just follow this guidance. And I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but even though we have the altitude set below the 3400, it should stop at the 3400 if we were to get there below, before, I should say, we actually reached that checkpoint. Small movements, just one click here and there. Um, our flap speeds are displayed down here. So flap extended speed, flight level. So flaps 180 knots. Two and three are both the same deflection. They're just for different phases. Uh, flap two is a takeoff setting. Flap three is a landing setting. And the reason that's important is I believe it has to do with the computerized control system of the speed brake. Um, and then final full flaps is 160. Landing gear extension, 250 knots. 
and VMC 97. So we just got to get it down to 180, which we'll be there, and we'll be able to start dropping flaps in a minute. Let's keep on to our vertical path. And a good pilot's goal is to manage the energy good so they don't have to use the speed brakes. If we do use them, I'll show you, and like, was, like I mentioned earlier, you'll see that they they're like slamming on the, the brakes of a car. They, they work really well. I'm actually going to chase it down a little bit because I, I wouldn't mind having to level off at the 3400 just to help bleed off a little bit of speed for the turn. port all right we're below and you can see here the plane is leveling off at the 3400 even though we have 2500 set so that's a great proof of concept for us there I also believe oh look at that the approach activated so even better this changed from a V to a G so it's gonna be following a glide path now so it should start doing our descent according to the RNAG glide path once that comes down. And now we can see the glide path is coming down. The speed is coming down. Look at this. I like it when a plane comes together. And we can see the runway in view now. 16 left. Go ahead and zoom that in a little bit. All right, let's do our approach checklist. Uh, approach, external lights as required, passenger's advice, crossfeed knob off, crossfeed knob is off, um, altimeter set and cross-checked, we've done that, icing conditions verified, there are none, before landing, yaw dampener off, landing gear down three green, flaps as required for landing, airspeed v ref. Alright, so let's go ahead and start hitting that up. We are good to start deploying flaps. We're going to bring this down to our VREF. Two point five miles from our next checkpoint. At that checkpoint, twenty five hundred is where I'll drop the landing gear. And we're just doing flaps one right now. We'll we'll start slowing down. We'll go to we'll skip flaps two. Go to flaps three after we hit our final checkpoint the 2500 foot mark and then we'll drop the landing gear there and that'll get us slowed down to our v-rev speed and now we have our radio altimeter working as well so this is measuring our height off the ground 2500 we're on our glide path let's go ahead and drop the landing gear and we will go to flaps three last flap setting will be flaps full and we'll do that just before touchdown down to our flap six speed. That looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and go to flaps full. And let's give it some throttle to hold and maintain our reference speed. All right, we we're at V ref. We're in line. We'll let the autopilot take us down to our minimums of 1100 before I disengage. We can go ahead and take the odd dampener off though, and bump it up just a little bit. And what's nice about letting the autopilot do this part is the autopilot now essentially is trimming the aircraft out for exactly what we need. That way, we don't have to do a lot of manual inputs. Got the runway in sight. 
Before landing, check list just one more time. Yaw dampener off, check landing gear down, three green, down, three green, flaps are on full, and airspeed is at V ref. So before landing, checklist is complete. So quickly talk about the landing. Don't need to do a lot of flare in this plane um, with flaps full. Uh, brakes after touchdown, you're gonna apply it spoilers as required. So we will manually engage the spoilers. I tend to do the spoilers as soon as the main landing gear is touched down to help bring the nose down. Bring that throttle back a little bit so we're not chasing the speed too much. And there is our minimum altitude. We'll let it do its call out. Um, also, our missed approach has us climbing to 3,000, so I'll roll this up to 3,000 if we have to do a go around. Two mile final runway one, two left. Autopilot off, continue, and since we're not doing autopilot, we'll go ahead and turn off the flight directors. And now I'm not really doing much on the stick. I'm actually just adjusting the throttle a little bit and the trim. I'm using the trim to make our adjustments with the angle. And double checking the wind, we have a headwind of six knots and no crosswind. So let's get ourselves straight. If you cut throttle going over the threshold, you'll float quite a bit. I tend to actually cut the throttle a little bit sooner than that. Once I know I can glide down to the to the runway is when I generally cut the throttle. Let's keep ourselves from going too low. And that's simply because I know this plane floats a lot. I'll let you know once I do it trim back and you can see here we are just above horizon with the attitude of the plane I'm aiming for the touchdown zone all right we're clear of all obstacles I'm gonna go ahead and bring the throttle back to idle now I'm gonna forcibly keep flying it down as the airspeed bleeds off I'm going to flare it back just a little bit hold it here hold it Main gear touched, deploy the spoilers, confirm, spoilers are up, and then just hold that center line. And we have a long runway and we got a taxi to the end, so I'm not even gonna use the wheel brakes. down now. Thousand foot marks to the end of the runway. We are going to go to the left. Spoilers have automatically gone down. I did not do that. All right, welcome to Bakersfield. All right. Turn it off the runway. Go ahead and bring the flaps up. Verify they're up. Speed brake back to closed. Taxi light and strobe light off. And where do they give us gas at? Let's see. Here we at. Fuel is all the way to the right. So that's where we will go. We'll go park by the fuel. any checklist flaps zero lights as required transponder as required transponder has gone from altitude to on that's fine next checklist is the shutdown checklist
try to keep the taxi under 30 knots right here when on a straight taxiway. And when turning, I want to keep that below 15 knots. I'm going to taxi down to alpha 2, and that's where I'm going to get off. So that's alpha 4, alpha 3. Alpha 2. Get us down below 15 knots. And we're going to park right in front of us. Taxi lights off. Look at this beautiful parking spot right here. Ease right into it. What's nice about, nice about this gate is you can turn right out. You don't even have to have a tug. Go up to that first little line. For me. All right, go inside. Parking brake is set. <clears throat> Shutdown sequence procedures. Shutdown. Maintain idle for at least two minutes prior to engine shutdown. Taxi time at idle or very low thrust can count in. The aircraft is not certified for single engine taxi. So we are fine with that. Thrust levers are at idle. Confirmed. Parking brake is set. Heating panel check. We can go ahead and turn these off. Icing protection panel. Check the engine one and two wing stabilizer and any special light switches are in the off position. Confirmed. Start stop switches. Go ahead and turn these to stop. MFD and ESI, EIS check. Check for the off message to display in the N1 indicators of both engines. It says off on both of those. Check. Signs and out switch to on off. So we can go ahead and take the seatbelt sign off. Leaving the airplane oxygen bottle to cut out. Check. Emergency lighting switch to off. Check. I will also use this time to turn off the cabin light and the nav light. Battery one and two switches to the off. And that would be the east down here. And that's everything. That's a full flight. Um, if you want to do a leaving the day stop, we'll go ahead and turn that off. Let's open up the passenger door and shutdown sequence is just reverse of takeoff starting up here. Air conditioning panel, go ahead and turn that off, those on low, the ECS to off, manual and automobile, we can leave that on auto. Going down here, parking brake set, idle thrust, speed brake close, flaps zero, ignition switches both are on off. Stop times two, go up and left. ADSP probes, we can switch those to off. All these switches are already in the off position. Fuel pumps, we can go ahead and cut those off. Cross feed is already off. Seat belts and pedestrian signs, move those to off. ELT, leave it on arm. Hydraulic pumps to close. Pneumatic, off, off, off. Generator switches to off. Bus tie auto is fine. Battery one and two, off. Oxygen cut out, pulled, and this is a complete cold shutdown. Hop outside, take a look at the plane. All right, so that's my tutorial. If you have any questions um, or anything on abnormal procedures or icing conditions, I can do another video later. Kind of goes over icing, but um, I appreciate you guys watching and 
leave a comment below.